Good morning, kind people of the internet. Today, I wanna to take you behind the scenes and show you some things that I'll be doing over the next two weeks to prepare for a recording session. So today is Friday in the middle of March and on March 30th, so in two weeks and one day, I'll be recording with the Tucker Brothers for their third album. So the Tucker Brothers consist of Joel Tucker on guitar, Nick Tucker on bass, Brian Yard on drums, and myself on saxophone. So this will be the third album with the group. The first album is titled Nine is the Magic Number, and here is a clip from that album. this group actually had a different drummer. Um, they had Ben Lumstein on drums, and here's a clip from that album.
looking through my sheet music for the group currently. I, I carry around this folder and it's just this purple folder that says Tucker Brothers and I've had to tape it a few times, but I just don't want to get rid of it yet. Um, so there's probably about maybe 30 or 40 tunes, original tunes, plus a bunch of arrangements of other tunes and lead sheets from other slightly more obscure standards that we'll play sometimes. So I was going through and picked out all of the music that we'll be doing on this recording session. So this is the pile of music. And I think we're at about 10 tunes for this session, maybe a little more or a little less, depending on what we decide to do. We have plenty of music and we, we could probably even do two albums um, pretty easily right now. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just narrowing down all the things that I know I need to work on. Some of the melodies I already have memorized, some of it I still wanna to try to memorize, some of it I know I probably won't be able to memorize in two weeks. Um, even though we've been playing some of the tunes for maybe almost four months now, maybe not quite that long, but um, so some of it is still really challenging and I wanna to try to get a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, and continue to review the stuff that I'm already really comfortable with. Okay, so one of the things that's important for me um, to prepare is just to make sure that I have a lot of really good working reads. So um, starting today, I'm gonna start breaking in new reads, maybe a couple each day. Um, and what I want, like to do when I break them in is for the first day that I start a read, I'll just play it for about a minute then the next day maybe about three minutes and then the third day about four or five minutes so um, i give it a really slow break, break in process those first three days and then i kind of let the read rest and um, if i can even let it rest maybe for up to a week then come play it then i usually find that it works really well um, something about i guess the wood sort of absorbs the water initially from those first few days and then it sort of settles into like a more stable state. So that's kind of what I like to do with my reads. And I'll use um, some, a few different read cases and a few uh, different Tupperware cases with um, different humidity settings, um, just because I don't know what's gonna happen with the weather over the next two weeks, but I wanna have a few different options because reads will react differently depending on like what case they're into. Um, sometimes it, they work great if I just leave them in the plastic case that comes with the reed and just throw it in a Tupperware container. So really simple storage, but it can actually work really well sometimes. So um, yeah, that's one of the things just as a saxophone player, I, I would love to have maybe like eight really solid reads um, the day of the recording. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go into the iReal Pro app on my phone and this is like a backing track app, if you're not familiar with it. It's really useful for like working on chord changes of tunes. Um, and I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to create a backing track for each of the songs that they have. Um, and basically, if you haven't seen this before, if I just open up one of the tunes, this is what it looks like. So you can actually just input your own set of chord changes for a song. And a few of the, the charts that they have have changes that move in like slightly um, different ways or ways that I just haven't really played over a lot. So I wanna be able to get some more reps in. Um, and we have been playing this music live, but it's a little bit different. Like in terms of performing it, um, I feel like sometimes it's harder to advance my level of comfort with a certain thing because I'm just sort of being in the moment and not really working on a specific thing with it. But if I take the time to put it uh, and create a backing track and then I can slow it down um, and really work on connecting the chord changes. So like finding guide tone lines that work to connect chord changes. Also trying to find melodies that I'm just naturally hearing over the chord changes. Um, the working with the backing track will help a lot with that. The other thing I will maybe do on a few of the spots in the tunes is just be able to figure out the chords on the piano and then play through the changes really slowly and then actually try to hear melodies in my head and then sing those ideas. So when I do that, 
I'm not thinking about what the actual notes are in the chords, but I'm just hearing the sound of the chord and then naturally we'll hear a note in our head. Then I'll try to sing that note and then like move and try to find melodies that way. And then if I find things that I like, um, I might actually try to figure out what notes they are and then maybe try to play it on my saxophone. That's another good way to sort of connect my ear with what's happening with the actual chord changes. <laughs> Okay, so another thing I'm going to be doing a lot over the next two weeks is working on the melodies. Um, you know, first of all, I want to be able to play the melodies really solidly in time. Um, there's a few of them that have pretty syncopated melodies and with like counter lines happening in the guitar and bass and drums might be doing a pretty syncopated thing too. So if, if I know my t sense of time is really rock solid, it's gonna be a lot easier to mesh with the band as a whole. I don't wanna have to be worrying about, you know, am I locking in or not? I just wanna feel comfortable with the tempo and even if we're playing something slightly faster or slower, I wanna feel comfortable with that too. Um, I think where we're recording, I'll be in an isolated booth, so I'll just be using headphones. Um, that can definitely be a little bit harder to feel like I'm really locking in, like in a live setting, especially with the drums, it's really easy to sort of like feel the pulse a lot more. So um, what I just wanna do is just get it, everything internally really locked in. So it'll be a lot of working with the metronome especially, um, slowing things down, and then also recording myself and listening back and just being real, really critical and saying, okay, am I playing with the metronome or am I dragging? My tendency is to lay back, but on some of the syncopated straight eight stuff, if I lay back, that's it doesn't really work very well. So I just wanna to try to get like really solid with that. Another thing I wanna be able to do with the melodies is really sort of solidify my phrasing, um, how I'm shaping the line, but especially where I'm breathing because there's a few of the heads that are sort of tricky and I don't wanna get stuck where I'm breathing in an unnatural spot or if I'm breaking up the melodic flow of the line. So I sort of have to like figure out where I'm breathing, um, make sure I'm practicing it at the tempo that we're gonna record and then be able to comfortably do that. I don't wanna have to feel like um, it's a struggle to get through a phrase. So I might have to figure out where I can like sneak in breaths, even if there technically isn't space. Um, I know there are a few places where I'm really gonna have to sort of figure that out. So that'll be one thing that will be really helpful to figure out ahead of time. Okay, so along with having the melodies really solidified um, and hopefully mostly memorized, although I'm sure I'll be using the sheets on a few things just to make sure I'm not guessing on, on certain places, but um, the other thing I, I'll definitely be working on a lot is, is playing over the changes. So um, for one of the tunes that Jill wrote, it's um, just a melody over rhythm changes. And uh, rhythm changes, I guess, for me, is something that I've never felt totally comfortable with. Whereas, uh, like, the blues or, like, a lot of other standards, um, I guess maybe they came more naturally to me, but rhythm changes never really seemed to just sort of click with me. Um, so that's one that I've been working on, actually, over the past month or so. But I still want to try to um, get even more comfortable if I can. So. The big thing I'm gonna do with that is work on it in different tempos, but work on a few different concepts. So for one, I will just slow it way down. We're, we're gonna be playing it relatively fast, but I'll slow, slow it way down and work on just bebop lines and getting that to try to really lock in my fingers and the time. And also sort of hearing where the lines go and want to resolve. <laughs> So if I do that, even if I don't necessarily want to play a lot of bebop lines when I'm doing, when we're doing the recording, I'm sure I will do a few naturally, but 
just by doing that, it sort of helps um, get get the sound of the changes more in my head. For whatever reason, I guess the bebop lines really outline the harmony, and then it sort of opens my ears up to maybe playing the harmony in other ways or resolving in slightly different ways. Um, so if I can do it really solidly, slowly, and usually I'll do that all slurred, um, and sometimes I'll even work on playing like straight eighth notes, even though we'll, we'll be doing it swing. Then when we go faster, I find that it's a lot easier. Of course, I'll be practicing it up tempo as well, but um, working on just like really basic um, bebop lines and, and lines that resolve through the changes really clearly, um, I think will actually help out a lot with that. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do to prepare for this session is just to try to be in a routine of reviewing the melodies and changes for every tune. So um, I'm gonna sort of create a spreadsheet for myself where I have each tune listed and then the days until the session. And what I'd like to do is try to hit each tune at least a couple of times, um, playing through the melodies, um, even if I'm working on just like a, a particular spot in the melody, or maybe like the hardest spot, um, and then playing through the entire melody and then working on the changes, changes a little bit. So I find that by doing this, even if I can only play like one melody once a day, it's better than taking a day off on that particular tune, just because it, it, the idea of refreshing the brain seems to work a lot better than playing it once, taking a bunch of days off, then trying to cram before, um, and maybe playing a tune for like an hour the day before. It works a lot better even if I can only spend like five minutes on each tune. Um, if I do that every day, it seems to work, work out a lot better. Um, I don't know exactly the science behind that, but it just seems to work. So that's pretty much the game plan. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to this recording session and I think I'll probably try to make some sort of behind the scenes vlog um, leading up to it or maybe uh, a few of the gigs leading up to it or while we're doing it, but there will definitely be some more footage either before, during, or after just to help share the process and uh, just sort of let you know what's going on. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.